it's morning. And that means it's time for Rotten Mornings. The best way to start your morning off rotten. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Rotten Mornings. Good morning. Matt. Scott. This is episode 30. It, is it? Jesus. Yeah, that means we've had to do this 30-something times. Well, 28 for me, but, you know, close enough. No, because you were a part of uh, episode 0 and 0. 0.5. Well, then that means you've had to do it 34 times. Well, that's ridiculous. <laughs> Not uh, big on math. Yeah, I, I try to do that, like follow along with your numbers there. I got lost and then had to take a little break, had a couple of tacos, and I'm back. And I'm back. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, man. What? A day we had yesterday. What a day. We didn't do anything. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) We had one thing. We had we had the podcast and one thing. Hey, that's awesome. Uh uh guys. Uh if you joined us yesterday, we had two things. (laughs) We had a whole bunch of two things. Yeah. Yeah, we did. Uh, we had the we had the podcast. We did. That was one of the things. And we had the episode of strips. That was another one of the things. Yeah. So if you're if you're following along with the math and you need to take a break, I know a really good taco stand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I I I, uh, I think the podcast was a podcast, and I think the strips uh, met all the requirements of being a strips. Indeed. It was a good episode of Strips. I enjoyed it. I, I also uh, enjoyed it. <clears throat> I, yeah, I think, man, um, I don't know how many people will get this reference, uh, but of our listener, Brandy, um, it kind of reminded me of Struck by Terror a little bit. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there was a there was a kind of a that kind of feel, but I think uh, both of those were based on the same kind of uh, horror uh, trailer kind of thing. You know how close how close I was to doing the fear line because <laughs> it just popped into my head. <laughs> That's crazy. Because I was like, I was recording the audio and I was like, fear, and I was like, oh shit, wait, that's <laughs> that's something else. Yeah, it's a different thing. All right. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and then like you teased the song so hard, you're like, I'm gonna make them beg for it. <laughs> like the awesome. intro to the song started for seven minutes. <laughs> also, the the fact that it's like, all right, guys, I'm gonna tease uh, Spider Baby. Uh, welcome to my last episode. <laughs> uh, and it's also like you like you tease the song. You're like, it's Spider Baby, Spider Baby. <laughs> you're like, Spider Baby, it's your motherfucker. Spider baby. <laughs> Do the thing, Spider Baby. <laughs> ah, you did it, man. <laughs> You're such a baby tease. <laughs> baby tease. Uh-huh. <laughs> yep, you don't get called that every day. Nope, not after the uh, not after the restrictions were put on you. So anyway, uh, today, oh man. Episode 30. Today is the 30th. It's Halloween Eve, man. It is the last episode. This is the last episode? I, I mean, uh, well, uh, strips. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, episode 30 of uh, Rotten Strips will be out today, um, which should be just, man, I, dude, can I tell you like how hyped I am for episode 30? No. <laughs> Fair. I I had the similar answer. The <laughs> you you also response. cannot tell me how hyped you are. I got That's it. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I would have to kill you. <laughs> with kindness. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
it just keeps getting worse. Like we, you thought episode one was bad, and it has been spiraling down ever since. It um, never, it never went up. Yeah, you would think there would be like a roller coaster, but this was just like a drop off. Well, that could be a roller coaster. It's a free fall. Yeah, but don't you have to go up to do the free fall? Not necessarily. Well, you could be standing on the edge of something. And they just push you. That's not a roller yeah. coaster. That's murder. <laughs> yeah, you could just be standing on the edge of something. Hey, roller coaster! And then they sparter your ass into the hole. Yeah. Roller coaster! Wee! This is roller coaster! <laughs> that was pretty fun for the first couple of seconds. Um, yeah, I'm I'm super excited about this episode of Rotten Strips. I'm almost done with it. Uh, I just got a couple of little tweaks. I was super excited to have that up early. I just have to do the the part where I I write it, film it, edit it. Uh, oh yeah, I feel that pain. Yeah, uh, and doing that without uh, any power or uh, electricity or uh, internet. Um. Jazz hands, baby. Jazz you have, hands. You have the power of Jesus Christ. It compels you. He compels me to make episode 30. <laughs> uh, anything else coming up today? Uh, it's coming up. Uh, no. Uh, no. <laughs> We're going live tonight. Okay. So, from Hellsley so Hollow. Have we finished... Um, have we finished the We Are Not Alone series? We have. We we, we don't have any more stories. <laughs> and we finished the uh, DIY uh, house. Yeah. Yeah. Grimm's done. Grimm's all wrapped up. Yeah. Um, <sighs> we should. Uh, we should, we should wrap up the podcast. Right. You say the word, baby, and this is done. <laughs> Are you talking to me or them? Uh, anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this podcast called Rotten <laughs> Uh Have a rotten rest of your life. <laughs> uh, no, I think we'll have a we'll, we'll have a podcast in the morning, right? Yes. Good. We will have the Halloween episode of Rotten Mornings. Uh, so you got that to to look forward to. <laughs> you look forward to. That's adorable. You have that to dread. <laughs> I always like wonder if there's some sort of a, a way that we could set the podcast program up to just like play us at a certain time. What do you mean? Like where they don't even choose it. Just like oh. wherever they're at, whatever's going on, they just, it just plays it. There's nothing they can do about it. So like, uh, like it would be a, a program that would come on the radio if everyone's listening to that radio stanchion. stanchion. No, more like we beam it into their head subconsciously. Okay. So I, I guess that begs the question, do you hate our audience? I just wonder why they, why they continue to return for this, you know, brutal slaughtering. It is a, it is a brutal slaughtering. Um, and I'll be googling that later. And uh, the fact checkers are furious right now that we fired them. Literally, um, the fact checkers are the three people that are listening to this. Yes, and they gave up on fact checking the first time they told us something was wrong, and we laughed at them. <laughs> We're like, "This is rotten mornings," and they're like, "Aren't you technically recording this?" And shut the mouth! Shut the mouth! <laughs> <laughs> Don't you destroy the illusion? There is so much of this that is just a complete and total lie that it's just like, you know, hey, live it. Yeah, uh, I'm Matt. And I'm not. Yeah, so there you go. First of all, Scott doesn't even like tacos, and I can spell perfectly. Yes. So we are really, we are spinning uh, the truth. If you guys came to the podcast this morning wanting to know the truth about Rotten Mornings, you're you're getting it. Hey, one more episode and you'll know everything that you need to know. One more episode and there'll be no more episodes. <laughs> <laughs> one more episode and you will have your final confirmation that this was a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, we've been trying to give you hints the whole time that you've been listening that you yep. should be and, listening. And it just proves that nobody's really listening. I mean, they might hear, but they're not listening, you know? Yeah, man. Like, oh, they're just saying okay and shaking their head, but like... This is a cry for help. <laughs> Please <laughs> help us. <laughs> this is a fucking cry for help. Why does no one listen? It's so stupid because it's like, uh, we found two separate guys, uh, death by suicide. Uh, and then, and then both of our ghosts are like, uh, you mean two different podcasters, right? Hey, we have a podcast. We do have a podcast. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why you're going to leave that out. Uh, guys, <laughs> uh, no podcasters. Okay, buddy. That's like we get killed because we get kicked by like a fucking deer to death in the face. And they're like, oh, yeah, the guy that got kicked to death by a deer in the face slash podcaster. (laughs) You could have led with that. (laughs) We only had one episode of getting kicked to death by a deer in the face. I got kicked in the face by one deer. And I don't get known as like rotten. No, no, no. I'm the guy that got kicked in the face by the fucking deer. Jeez. (sighs) You know that's how that goes, though. It is. Yeah. Have I, I, the other thing I, I like wanted to bring up in this podcast, in this in this section of the podcast, is a little thing that we don't talk about a lot, but um, milking it for time. Oh, I thought you were going to say how we told everybody in the beginning that we would hate each other by the time this was done, and we're well on our way to that point. Oh. We lied about that. We started off that way. <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, you've got a you've got a uh, a podcast for me. Yes, I do. <laughs> Two guys hate each other, right? Uh huh. I'm following, <laughs> and then we make them do a podcast together. Wowie, wowie, wow! Think Seinfeld meets people that don't like each other. That's right. Why, why Seinfeld? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> because we have a catchy theme song. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. For some reason, it just was funny as shit just now. <laughs> Seinfeld does it. I never laughed once. Matt does it. Uh, I'll I'll give him a giggle. Hey, here's your, here's your giggle. Hey, yeah. thanks for the giggle, man. I'm gonna cash this in. Maybe we'll make some money off this finally. Uh, well, <laughs> going to. Oh, that's going to. the exchange rate on giggle is extremely low. Dude, you know what's so stupid? Uh, Dude. I have been uh, probably fifteen to eighteen of the episodes have a like an ad. A sponsored ad section. So, like anybody who, like if they they have a good fit for a sponsor, that's the ad spot they can use, and that's how they monetize uh, the podcast. Right. We've done thirty episodes now. We've done had one sponsor. Oh, what episode was that? No, I'm saying we haven't had a single like someone listen to the podcast and was like, yeah. We want to be on that bullshit. Of course not. Why the why the hell would they do that? Uh, Larry's AC in Indiana. We'll do all your AC needs in Indiana, and we got this <laughs> spot super fucking cheap. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, we covered the basics. I guess we did it poorly. Always. We are on brand. <laughs> Uh, we're going to go ahead and jump into the supernatural section. And, uh, if you guys are joining us over there, you know, the, this whole thing, but if not, you guys have a rotten morning. That thing. Stay rotten. Here at Rotten Productions, we are huge fans of film. 
in the realm of film, there are horror films, and then there are horror stories about films. In this multi-part series, we explore cursed films. And we're back. And we're back. Both of us. Okay, good. I was well, hoping. Uh, I was hoping when I said we, it wasn't the universal we, and by universal we, I mean me and my belly. I got a we. <laughs> In my belly. What is it? Brandy is here too. I am. And Brandy knows the topic today. Uh, as long as it's what you said it would be. That's right. We're uh, the third part of our cursed film series. And we're going to, to uh, go over a couple of more cursed films. Uh, just to recap the previous ones. In the first episode, we talked about. Uh, Alf, nope, Artok. And- yes, Alf, Alf from <laughs> Malnek. He eats uh, cats. Hey, no problem. That's, uh, not, that's not an owl. Is that not an owl? Alf is, I kill me. He did kind of Rodney Dangerfield. Yeah, he also said no problem. That was one of his nah. phrases. Nah. Yeah. Nah, I don't like listening to you. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I was just thinking that, but like the other person. What other person? You. You there don't isn't. like you. Nobody is on this podcast with you just doing a stupid ass accent like you've got friends. No, I am not. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Are you going to use that accent the whole time? No. It's <laughs> you have the accent. Uh, I'm just not going to do the podcast with you anymore. Shut your butthole! And I've lost it. Good to one. Himself. <laughs> Good one. If you guys only knew how often Scott talked to himself in a public area, you would laugh your everything's <laughs> off. Uh, and in my private areas. <laughs> 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 Okay, so like I'd like I'd like to say something about the uh, films that we're talking about today. If it's uh, the three films, yes. If it's if it is it three films or two, it's three. What was the other one? I know Poltergeist, Exorcist, and what was the other one? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> we're so ready for this. Poltergeist and Exorcist were the only ones you mentioned, so those are the only ones I looked at. Okay, but I did tell him three, so... You did. I did. Uh, the Omen. Oh, okay, The Omen. That was the other one. Right, right, right. Yeah. Or Rosemary's Baby, which is also pretty... Oh, we talked about that. Oh, we did. We did Rosemary's, didn't we? We did Rosemary's Baby in the second part of the episode when you got up and left. I listened to it. <laughs> No one does. <laughs> Why? Um, but I, I, those movies are very, those particular movies scared me as a kid. Like, there are stuff in those movies that scared the hell out of me. Okay, is that what you wanted to say? That's it. Yeah, I'm done. Stay oh. rotten. <laughs> Deuces, my, my gooses. Um, no, I honestly, in, in like, I know that there's like a new generation of horror film, and I know you stay more current on the new generation of horror films than I do. And uh, a lot of them are really neat ideas, and a lot of them are really uh, well done, and a lot of them are really pretty. For me, uh, The Exorcist is one of the most terrifying fucking things to watch. I agree. The Exorcist was terrifying. I don't think like nowadays, like I couldn't, I have not seen a movie in the past shit. I'd say 15, 20 years that I would be like, Oh, that, that movie scared me. Like I'm frightened of it or, you know, I don't know. Yeah. But then like, <laughs> hell man, ET scared the shit out of me. <laughs> but the this? scene in Paul, Guys with the fucking meat and the maggots and the dude tearing his face off in the in the mirror scared the hell out of me. 
in which one? The pol in Poltergeist. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, there's there's definitely like uh, super iconic scenes in this, and like even if they don't have like a scary story behind them, just the film themselves is just gut wrenching terror. This is yeah. terror. Like it's not it's like beyond a horror film. A horror film can be like campy. This is fucking terrifying. And I, I kind of want to throw like Cannibal Holocaust in there. Eh, I don't know about Cannibal Holocaust. Just because it was like the shock value, I saw it when I was. I think it, I think Cannibal on. Holocaust. Cannibal Holocaust was unnerving, but it wasn't scary. That's fair. I'll say that. It was like unsettling. Yeah, like just like Meet the Feebles wasn't like scary. It was just like, ugh, it just makes you feel icky. Well, disturbing. The word disturbing. Yeah. Well, like, what about Blair Witch though? Well, I mean, again, Blair Witch was the concept is terrifying to me because I used to do that stuff, but watching that movie wasn't scary. Uh, I I found it to be pretty like the first viewing of it and, and kind of going in blind to what I'm seeing and like the the camera angles and shots and like the yeah the, I, I could say that because it's really hard for me to go back and say what it was like the first time I saw a movie that was like that kind of concept I've seen so many now my brain just goes well I was probably like thinking this yeah <laughs> Well, I definitely remember being scared by the Blair Witch when I first saw it. Of course, I was in high school at the time, so I still think that was part of it. Yeah, but Brandy, you you grew up in kind of a wooded area too, right? Uh, yeah, well, yeah. I, I grew up somewhat in the country area when I was younger, but then we moved to more city area. But when yeah. I first saw the Blair Witch, I was actually at a friend's house, which felt like the middle of nowhere at the time. Uh, um, and we were actually watching a bootleg copy on her brother's computer. Um, and then I had to drive home afterwards, which was about 45 minutes on the other side of town. And I, I do very much remember being very unsettled and jumping at shadows. And see, with me, like, the Blair Witch was, that's like our every weekend when we were kids. <laughs> like, that's all we did. Like, we would literally just, like, we always lived in the woods. We'd go out in the woods at midnight and just go get lost. Yeah. And like, it, it had the nostalgia for me because it was like watching one of our VHS videos that we used to shoot. We were just dicking around in the woods. Yeah. No, that that's why it was scary to me because like those woods look like woods I've been in. Yeah, and I just know if I come across some shit like that, it would just be fucking terrifying, dude. See, I I think that my brain would just wouldn't I wouldn't have thought that it was a witch at all. Well, I mean, we've been in the woods in somebody else's property and them come and, and mess with us. So, like, we're we're more of a, oh, shit, we pissed somebody off. We got to get the fuck out of here. Yeah, it's the, it's the scared I'll get caught, not the scared I'll get killed. Exactly. Yeah, I'll get that. That's fair. Hell yeah. Um, cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm on the same page. I'm on the same page. Um, all right. Well, let's jump into the the films. Uh, you guys want to start with the Omen? That's the one I've yeah, looked let's... at the least <laughs> so far. Things have yes. didn't tell us that one. Well, I told one of us. Let's go yes. ahead. Let's start with the Omen. Don't listen to her. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Matt, what can you tell me about the film? The film, The Omen, well, the little fellas, uh, Damien, uh, they did a lot of 666 stuff, which I hate because I don't think there's anything like satanic about that. Uh, at the time, it was it was extremely like risque to be on that. Uh, it had, you know, suicide for suicide's sake right off the jump, which was a big hit in the balls back in those days. Uh and that was kind of like the idea of the power of this 
this little kid, you know. Right. Yeah. And it's another one of those cases where they kind of like took a sort of historical idea and like coupled it into a movie. Uh huh. Same way they did with sort of with Poltergeist and exactly what they did with The Exorcist. Yeah, uh, which which we, we're going to jump into, and we'll see a lot of similarities in that. Um, in the making of The Omen, lots of things happened uh, <laughs> that made people think, yeah, you know, making making those films was rather controversial because yeah. those dealt with, like, demonic things uh, or or Satanist like um, or Satan, not Satanist, but like Satan like themed stuff, which was not mainstream, uh, like mainstream, and so like people were like hesitant to even work on those films because it was so against anything that was out there. Yeah, it was like a slight. The uh, the first like I guess the first thing that happened with the Omen. That was like, what the fuck just happened? Uh, uh, Gregory Peck, <clears throat> who's like the protagonist in the film, he reportedly had canceled this flight that he had gotten to fly to set and decided to go a different route. And the flight crashed. So Nice. And, and that's strange. But the stranger thing is that the the plane crashed into a vehicle carrying the pilot's family. Jesus. Yeah. Which is very crazy. That doesn't got shit to do with Gregory Peck. That has shit to do with a pilot. Well, yeah. on a separate flight for Peck, however, his plane was struck by lightning. That's and right. then on another separate flight, the writer's plane was also struck by lightning. Oh, yeah. All so we traveling got... to and from film locations. So we have yet another movie with a religious tie-in that's being affected by an act of God. Kind of weird. Kind of weird. I'm just saying. If you're into that whole capital G stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's some story about the executive producer too where one night he's going out to dinner with other members of the cast and when they get there the restaurant has been destroyed by a weird violent explosion and then at another time him and his wife check out of their hotel right before the hotel blows up in a violent explosion Jesus, that's pretty, uh, that's a lot. It's that is, like, it I think like, like, uh, they oh, might be bombers. They might be bombers? Well, there were rumors of the uh, IRA being responsible for those explosions at that time, too. But uh, another thing is the special effects designer um that did the decapitation scene uh he was in a head-on car crash that decapitated his wife he did and uh i think he said that there was a road sign at the side of the road that said the there was a town that they were going toward called omen that was 66.6 kilometers away Right. <laughs> well, I, I, or was it Omen or Amen? I saw it with two M's. Yeah, I, I don't know how to pronounce that. It's different language than I speak. <laughs> oh, that's that's wild. Hey, before we go to our next one, why don't we go to a commercial break? Okay, cool. Uh, guys, enjoy this uh, commercial from one of our sponsors. Hello. What a great sponsor. <laughs> you know what? Have you have you ever mentioned how we just for these people listening that we went through and took all the the ads out so y'all don't have to deal with that crap? Oh, yeah, these are our premium subscribers. 
Yeah. So y'all don't have to deal with the ads. They're like three or four minutes long. It's ridiculous. So for you guys, we got you. Man, the the ad that you guys just missed, if you're one of our premium subscribers, uh, was like a tutorial on suppositories. Yeah, and oh. like they just they they pick what goes best with our show, and it turns out that sticking stuff up your ass <laughs> is favorable to listening to our podcast. So you know what, you guys are lucky. You're welcome. That's from us. Yeah, that that's a treat. You're also welcome. Whoa! <laughs> I tried it. Did I hit it? Did I hit all the marks there? Did I say it? You did. You did. I don't hate it. <laughs> I like how, uh, just for that last word, Brandy did a ventriloquist act <laughs> where she <laughs> stuck her hand up your ass like a suppository and made you say welcome. When people <laughs> stick a finger in my butt, my eyes become ease. <laughs> wow. <Yeah. laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, heavens to Betsy. Okay, so... Uh, just finishing up with the Omen, though, we would say that this is a cursed film, or we would say that there was coincidences that happened on the set? I say, I would say that in this particular case with the Omen, that they definitely wanted to find something to link in to make the Omen cursed. Okay. I would say there's a lot of coincidences, but I think that a lot of that is played up because of the Omen itself. That's fair. I also think in a three men and a baby kind of way, I think that uh, a lot of this stuff was reported to have happened. Yeah. Agreed. Um, yeah. And it, I think what's weird is that like, uh, oh, he's flying on a plane and it gets struck by lightning. And then, oh, and now they're flying over here and it gets struck by lightning. I think like one plane got struck by lightning. But, like, uh, as people are telling the story, it was two different people. They got confused on who it was. So now it sounds like there's two planes that got struck. Oh, he got, oh, I heard that this guy got it. Oh, there's two planes? I would go out on a limb and say that every plane probably gets struck by lightning. And the more a coincidental effect is that somebody actually saw these planes get struck by lightning. It's not like they had video cameras on the outside. Well, also, no one was actually hurt on either of the planes that were struck by lightning. Yeah, I don't think there was anyone. I, I I didn't see anything where anyone was hurt in either of the violent explosions. Right, and I didn't like no. There was no information based on that, other than oh, the it happened right before the executive producer got there, or right after he left. Yeah, maybe that's just a cursed executive producer. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, trust me, when well, when man, there's an explosion and they're more interested in the fact that some douchebag just walked out of there, something is going on. Maybe he was a target of the IRA. <laughs> yeah, executive producer is just uh, the guy who has money and doesn't really have much say in the, the thing. Right. <clears throat> when we list executive producer for Rotten Productions, we don't list an executive producer for Rotten Productions. Because we don't have one. Yeah, uh, we well we had one at one time, but he died in a violent explosion. Yes, damn those executive producers and their bad luck with explosions. Uh, so much. Okay, so we think maybe Omen, uh, good scary film. Is there a horror story behind it? Uh, maybe it's all for an instance, right? I'm thinking it. I'm thinking BS with the Omen. Well, in all honesty, out of all the ones we've discussed so far. The only one that does not rank real high on the coincidental meter for me is the Atuk. Okay. That's fair. I I think uh I think that one is 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 very mind mind chilling. I yes. think that one is so good that I'd rather not talk about it anymore. <laughs> is that the Alf movie? Yes, from Melmet. He eats cats. Hey, and he no says, problem. He says, no problem. <laughs> All right, then. So, moving on. What was the... There was Gordo, and who was the other one? What are you talking about? 
and out. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> no, nope, it doesn't. <laughs> so our next uh, cursed TV show is Alf. <laughs> <laughs> You know, some there's a really like we could go into Alf and why Alf was Alf and not like the blue monster that wasn't like the original creation and like yeah, the thing that was stalking the guy. Yeah, like there is a very terrifying story behind the creation of Alf and like. Would you shut up about Alf for the love of God? Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. So our next topic is oh, god damn it it's alf why is this in my script not alf. Alf. It's poltergeist alf. let's go with poltergeist 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 guys poltergeist so uh, the rumor with poltergeist was that the film crew used real skeletons and desecrated graves to get them but i still feel like that was a heavy emphasis on rumor and they i believe if i'm not mistaken uh, they have come out and been like, "That's bullshit." I, uh, it it is a story that anybody who's familiar with that film has heard, though. Oh, and yes. it's the bodies that were in the pool with her in the scene when she is pulled out of the house and she lands in the pool that has been dug up. Yeah, and they like start floating up with her. Yeah. Uh very terrifying scene. Agreed. Poltergeist has a ton of terrifying scenes. Poltergeist still yeah. is in that group of like that. There's still stuff in that movie that's like, ugh. And I, that and a few of the ones we've mentioned, but definitely that one and Omen definitely had that very unsettling, creepy child thing that really gets to people. Yeah. With Reagan. Mm hmm. Yeah. I, dude. Uh, I was just thinking about that scene, and then uh, I probably saw that scene after I had heard that story. So mm-hmm. the, the first time I see it, I'm like, "Oh shit!" Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but there was some other stuff that happened with Poltergeist. Well, there were some mysterious and untimely deaths, uh, so to speak. So. Heather O'Rourke, the girl who played Carol Ann, died at 12 years old of a congenital intestinal issue. Mm. Uh, Dominique Dunn, uh, Dana, the older sister, was murdered by a jealous boyfriend when she was 22. But from what I can tell, most of the other deaths involved were pretty much due to age and explainable illness. So I, so I still feel like this one like ranks Zelda. pretty high on the coincidental thing. Yeah, you know, there has to be like some point where you're like, okay, everybody who made you know worked on this film died. Okay, uh, everybody died. Like in the case we were talking about with uh, the Conqueror, um, mm-hmm. they did die. Uh, but there was a reason they died. They right. exposed themselves to nuclear fallout radiation. Yeah, but you could also say like the uh, Noah's Ark uh, that drowned the extras, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and like it, it even say like Noah's Ark, I mean, shit, like, or whatever the name of that movie was. What is the name of the movie? It's not Noah's Ark. It's something. Is it Moses? Ark of it. Yeah, I think it is the Moses movie, maybe. You there? Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm trying to think what you're what you're referring. I'm not sure I'm familiar. Well, with the you. director had set up a scene that when the water rolls back in, like there's a flooding scene, and he didn't tell any of the extras that they were actually using this tons of water, and a lot of people drowned because they just did not realize what was going on. And the director was like, man, they're extras, you know? So what? (laughs) So we're using a live tiger in our gladiator scene. But the film's about the tiger. I mean, that's effectively what happened. But, you know, it's 2020. None of those people are still alive. Is that the film cursed? Or is that just the fact that time has passed? Yeah. That's fair. Uh, we had talked about that with like 
uh, every actor who is associated with the film Nosferatu has right. died. Has right. died. Yeah. Mysteriously, I'm sure. Yes, mysteriously at the age of 110. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm no Sherlock, but I have read a Sherlock story. <clears throat> so, are uh, we thinking Poltergeist cursed or... I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Poltergeist was only cursed for the little girl. That's fair. And we're thinking the 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 skeletons. That's all bullshit. I do. I think that the skeletons 100 percent bullshit. There is no way that it would be easier to get real skeletons, real dead bodies, than it would be to get fake ass dead bodies. Right. And and I think it it was like some of the other ones we mentioned, where the more hype they could create for it the more sales they would have yeah that's fair okay well let's jump into our third one and uh we're gonna take a quick commercial break and we'll jump into our third section and we'll knock that out real quick all right yeah except for our premium people we'll be right back for you guys (laughs) i want to go get some of that colgate toothpaste right now it tastes, it sounds like it tastes delicious. It does. And it's edible. I know, like taco flavored toothpaste. How does that, like. I, I feel like I don't, I wouldn't like ruin my tacos by brushing early if I was brushing with Colgate taco flavored toothpaste. That's a, that was a good one. <laughs> All right. So we're going to talk about The Exorcist. Now, this the film. The Exorcist. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're not talking about any old exorcist. The no, exorcist. The what exorcist. Is it? Exorcist. <laughs> um, this one's so definitely a lot right? of. Well, yes, there was a lot of disturbing stuff that happens in this movie. That even like watching it now, if you watch the full version, it still will spook you. Is that they had the subliminal images that popped up in the background. They had like all the different, like just unsettling camera angles, the fades, the jumps, like everything was so well mastermind. And then like the one scene when she comes walking backwards down the staircase is just ugh. It really was that. It was too much of that. <laughs> Unnecessary. <laughs> yeah. Uh, who directed that? Do you remember? Uh, oh, it was a William Friedkin. I thought that was who wrote it. Did he direct no, it? Well, no, no, no. He, William Friedkin was the director, uh, but he based it off of a book from William Peter Blatty a That's couple right. years earlier. That was supposedly based off of a real life event where Catholic priests at Georgetown University performed an exorcism on a young boy, but had to stop when the boy got free of his restraints, pulled a bed spring out of his mattress and began slashing one of the priest's arms. Wow. But Friedkin was interviewed several times years later as saying he already knew that Blatty had made the whole thing up. And so that gave him license to, to take create, you know, creative license with the scenes to make it extra terrifying. Yeah. Uh And the Catholic church has also said that it is not real because even if they had been doing something to that effect, information would not have been given to, William Peter Blatty about it. You know, for me, like exorcisms are the idea of them are terrifying. Even if you pull out like, oh, they're possessed by demons. I think like the act of like exorcism was performed on lots of people who were not possessed by any demons. I would go out on a limb and say that the act of exorcism has been practiced on many people, none of them being possessed by demons. 
Uh, how far out on that limb do you want to go? Uh, well, I'll tell you what. I don't believe in demon possession. So you don't think that demons have the right to own anything? I don't believe that demons exist in that capacity. Okay. So you don't think that a an entity can... Uh, be housed in another person? Or I didn't say that. that. Okay. I, I, do not, I do not mean that at all. What I mean is the exorcism is using a religious doctrine to exorcise a religious being. I do not believe in religious beings. Therefore, demons do not exist. If an exorcist went after, say, a thing that was inside of a human being, and use religious rhetoric against it, that it would laugh. It's not a part of that religion. It doesn't matter. It's like the idea of holding up a cross to a Jewish vampire. Does that affect him anymore? Right. Well, you know, I was born and raised Catholic, uh, went to private Catholic school for 12 years. At no point were we ever taught anything about exorcism i can definitely say that but i i guess when i look at it from you know today from this perspective it seems more along the lines of uh mental health disorder and yes and trying to uh cure them in, uh, to some extent that's what i personally think it is it's a disorder not a not a monster inside of them especially when it comes to the religious actions being you know again it, it's the same thing and look i'm a skeptic when it comes to these kind of things and you want to know how skeptical i am i am so skeptical that i honestly believe that the story of helen keller is about somebody who was raised rich and was too lazy to open their mouth or do anything because they were taking care of so much Nobody ever said just be, and that's what Helen Keller was. And then the miracle worker came along, along no science, no doctrine, and healed her from those things? No, dude. That's not how anything works. Well, I'm not really sure how we went from talking about the exorcist to Helen Keller, because I would never have drawn that correlation. Oh, I would. <laughs> I, I, I'm totally on page because <clears throat> uh, Helen Keller had uh, a series of ailments or, or, or uh, could be considered disorders or disabilities that uh, certain religious sects may have seen as being caused by demons. Yes. And then you had the miracle worker come out there and effectively scream at her like an exorcism and go, be normal. Yeah. Yeah. And eventually it's stuck, I guess. Normal. So, do we want to stay on this tangent or go back to talking Brandy about wants to talk exorcist. about the exorcist. She did a lot of research on this shit. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the next 20 minutes will be about how. Uh, both Alf and Helen Keller. Oh, <laughs> There's a correlation between those stories. Helen Keller also. <laughs> well, uh, the story of Alf was about somebody who thought that, that a, a demon was after them. <laughs> and just like Helen Keller. They had to have a miracle worker, and it was by eating cats. Guys, I'm so glad that you tuned into this episode of Rotten Mornings. I'm so glad you uh, joined us for season three, episode five of Al. <laughs> I'm so glad you joined us to hear why I get so incredibly aggravated. <laughs> hey, guys, hands up if you want to hear all the stuff Brandy studied. <laughs> hands up. Oh, yeah, I can see them. Yeah. <laughs> Brandy put her hand up. Uh, well, that's one. What do you got, Brandy? <laughs> <laughs> we did this on a previous podcast where we're like hey guys do you want to hear me and matt talk more put your hands up neither of us put our hands up and yet here we are okay so let's go back to the damn exorcist <laughs> well 
The and set hot we fire. We're going to go to commercial break really quick. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, we'll be right back with actual stuff about The Exorcist. What a great ad for Brandy's Rage Pills. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever you're dealing with two idiots, take some of Brandy's Rage Pills <laughs> by Menon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Brandy, what do you got? Okay. So the set caught fire, which delayed shooting, and the director blamed the fire on a pigeon getting into a circuit box. As one does. Metaphor. <laughs> Then Ellen Burstyn, uh, who played the mother, was actually injured in the take where Reagan throws her to the ground. Mm -hmm. And this is actually the take they used in the film. And her scream is very real. Reportedly, the injury still bothers her now because it permanently, permanently injured her spine. Wow. Then there were two other actors, Jack McGowan and Vasiliki Maliaros. They Uh, both died while the film was in post-production. And some of the mystery around that was talking about how uh, both of their characters in the film also died. And there were also other deaths of uh, different relatives of the actors that died during the shooting of it. And during the filming, Linda Blair was thrown out of a bed when a piece of rigging broke and also hurt her back. Uh, Mercedes McCambridge, the woman who played the voice of Pazuzu, in 1987, her son murdered his wife and kids and then killed himself. So there, there was just lots of random things attached to this film in some way. Yeah. You know, a lot of the the ones that we have talked about have been, oh, he was struck by lightning, but it was okay. The plane was struck by lightning. Oh, but it was okay. The restaurant blew up, but nobody got hurt. This is people died and are suffering from injuries today from things that happened on set. Right. That's a different thing. Right, exactly. But of course, when the film was released, there were all kinds of people claiming that it was cursed, even before in some of these deaths happened, uh, including Billy Graham, who apparently gave uh, several speeches about it. And it ended up being banned in several countries, including the UK, which didn't lift their ban until 1999. Wow. Why would and why was it banned? Uh, because it was seen as evil and and cursed, apparently. Yeah, I can definitely see that. But at, at one particular showing, a woman fainted and broke her jaw when she fell. But she sued Warner Brothers for it, saying that subliminal messages caused the accident. Now, that happening doesn't really surprise me. The part that did was that Warner Brothers paid her. Yeah. Well, because in that particular suit, it's not evil. It is actually that they had subliminal messages in the movie. They did? Yes. Well, the way I the way I interpreted that was if if they paid her for that, then they're kind of saying they did that. I mean, the, when they're paid, Pazuzu pops up all the time in like quarter second frames that you never see. You have to slow it down to catch them. Really? Yes, that movie is plagued with pop second scenes. It's all through it where they pop the idol up or they pop a face up. Hmm. Well, there's also, you know, because, you know, we've talked before about some kind of ghost activity or paranormal activity being caused by uh, manifestations from people that have dealt with trauma. Mm-hmm. There were several actors on this set that felt traumatized just by the way the director behaved. 
William Friedkin was known to do things like firing guns on set in order to get reactions from the actors. And at one point, he even slapped an actual priest across the face before a take. The, the priest that was playing Father Dyer was actually a real priest. And he slapped him across the face right before a take to get a certain reaction. Wow. You know, there's uh, there's stories that that's what the directors did to the actors in uh, Blair Witch. Mm. Yes, because the whole thing was meant like they just gave him a rough draft and then they were like, OK, we're going to fuck with you, but you're not going to know what it is. Yeah. And I don't even know if that story is true or if that came out I, later as a uh, well, uh, part of I'll the fun of it, you know. I'll say this about the Blair Witch thing. If I was a film student, if I was an actor and somebody came to me and projected a movie idea in that way, I would have no problem signing up to do it. So all of those people in the movie, Heather and and all those cats, they could have actually known that was the case. It's not like, oh, we're so ruined. They knew that they were going to be treated that way so they could get in the character i mean they're fucking actors yeah well if you listen to any of the ellen burston interviews that have been given in more recent years she is definitely not willing to admit that she signed on for this and was given an an option on whether or not she would be injured but in what the exorcist yes yeah 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 she wasn't in blair witch yeah, I was, I was like, I don't remember her in Blair Witch. She Weird. played, the, she played the witch. Ah, yeah, ah. She played uh, stick figure Alf. number three. Yeah. Did you say Alf? We've moved past that. You said Alf. Oh, <clears throat> that's fair. I just. But I mean, I, another fun thing about The Exorcist is you can uh, visit the stairway that the uh, that the priest fell down and died. It's in Germany. Oh, they have it preserved. Yes. Wow. I like I like uh, sets that still exist or parts of sets that still exist. There's also in Germany you can go and uh, get on Falkor. Uh, from <laughs> what? You're an idiot. No, they they have an actual they have the actual Falkor from Neverending Story. Really? <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't know that it was preserved. Like, I just found that out not too long ago, and I'm I kind of like Rock me on the ass, Falcor, right? <laughs> yeah, no, that not that one. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What? <laughs> that, that went so far over my head. I see Falcor, man. Falcor, Amadeus, 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 Amadeus. Come and rock me, Amadeus. Not sure what that has to do with Falcor. That's the name of the guy. Oh, you're the name of the guy. <laughs> <laughs> so what else we got with the Exorcist? Uh, I think that's all I had. Okay. Well, that's a lot. There's a lot. That is a lot. And uh, really, of the ones that we've talked about, uh, I know uh, Rosemary's Baby is, is considered to be one of the most cursed films, but I, I would say Exorcist is, is pretty high I would there. I would say Exorcist because of what they did with the Exorcist. Yeah. Like, the Exorcist itself is set up to make you feel like you are possessed by a demon after you watch it. It is made to subconsciously affect you So that scene pops into your head every once in a while. I, I do agree with that take on it. However, as far as title for most cursed film, I still, after everything we learned in the previous episode we did on this, the first episode we did on this, I still say I took, I do. Like that, that one was so bizarre to me. Here's a, here's a fun little fun fact on quote unquote cursed films. How, how cursed is a film when it's making X amount of billions of dollars? I think the cursed film is the one that never fucking got made. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's true. I don't know if uh, anyone listening has ever heard of Redwood. You could have just stopped there. <laughs> I, I, I'll say the same thing. I don't hey, know if anyone it. is listening either. Never got released. 
I don't know uh, of anyone who's listening who's ever heard this podcast. Yeah, I don't know of anyone who's listening. <laughs> yeah, there's that. That's, That's okay. Serious. It's okay. Uh, you know, <laughs> guys. Oh, I did want to say this. Uh, when we're talking about subliminal messages, um, I don't remember the name of this film, and I know that we have screened this film uh, because it is ridiculous. Actually, you may still have a VHS copy of it where it was like banned in 48 countries, including the U.S., for the most like subliminal messages. And you're like, I'm fixing to watch some crazy shit. And like, it would pop up like a, a cutout Halloween monster's face. And I think yes. one of it said, Scream Bloody Murder. It just popped yes. up on the screen. <laughs> Honestly, I think the name of one of those movies is Scream Bloody Murder. It, it may be. Uh, I'm trying to think of that, that that particular film because I don't even remember the film. The quote-unquote subliminal messages stayed on fucking uh, screen for so long. that Yeah, that it wouldn't work. Well, you know, well, uh, uh, subliminal the, uh, the House on Haunted Hill uh, with Vincent Price uh, was pitched as with spooky vision and it did that too kind of flashing up scenes really fast and then taking them away uh it's weird that you bring up that film because the absolute shittiest moving skeleton (laughs) happens in that movie and for some reason i don't know if it was just like the time in which i watched it uh, it was creepy to me. I have to I have to agree. That skeleton scene in House on Haunted Hill is probably the scariest scene in that movie. Oh, oh, oh by far. And and, and probably... it's so it's it's the uncanny valley thing. It's like, okay, you're gonna do a skeleton. Okay, that looks like shit, but like, goddamn, that would be terrifying as fuck if that was coming at me. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and there's a lot of films with like skeleton warriors or or a skeleton army, and you're like, they're skeletons. I can kick them over into dust. Yeah, exactly. Why are they so scary? I no clue. Like animated by magic, so they uh, would just go back to, I don't know. Yeah, I don't remember any cartilage remaining after anyone's dead. Yeah, and I don't remember any just straight cartilage monsters. Yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, cartilage, the movie. No, nope, wouldn't work. Wouldn't work as a movie. <laughs> Guys, uh, we could not exhaust this topic anymore. Yes, we could. We will not exhaust this topic anymore. God hope so. Uh, cool. Well, that wraps up our, our three-part series on Cursed Films. Uh, tomorrow, a uh, little preview, uh, we will be doing uh, our one episode our final episode of Rotten Mornings, and we will be talking about The Bell Witch. Ooh. It is a big, fat topic that we have been excited to talk about this entire time. Uh, all of these other episodes were just filler to get to that point. We're super jazzed. And watch how, fu- how much we butcher the shit out of this one. <laughs> right? Oh my god, dude. The Taco Bell Witch is one of my favorite <laughs> Mild sauce? What am I? Pussy? Um, <laughs> gonna be a lot of fun. I hope you guys join us for that in our, our final installment of Rotten Mornings. Uh, we've had a blast making these, and we've had a blast the three of us listening to them. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I like how we always say, like, when we're talking on the podcast and we address the audience, we say, hey guys, um, you do realize that it's literally four women that listen to this. Yeah. Yes, that's right. But they don't all identify that way. <laughs> okay, all four women ex- aside from me and you, idiot. Yes. It, right. <laughs> I, there's four women that listen to this. Uh, we love yes. you, four women who listen to this. There are literally four women that li- I would go out on a whim and say there are four women that listen to this, and that's our whole entire audience. Well, there are four women that have admitted to some times listening to this anyway. Okay. Uh, and, and we had one woman who admitted to 
to definitely not listening to this. Correct. <laughs> so I don't know if that takes one away or adds. I don't know what that does. I, it's <laughs> math. math is super hard. Uh, guys, thank you all for, for uh, this episode. I actually had a lot of fun with it. And uh, for everybody else, have a right morning. Have a right morning, guys. And I want to thank Brandy for all her fucking research. <laughs> Brandy, that was awesome. Uh, really uh, added a lot to an episode that we had nothing on. And uh, again, guys, if you ever get yourself in that situation, Brandy's rage pills. It is <laughs> a life They fucking work. They fucking work. Hey, I'm still here. So it, it's got to be doing something. <laughs> They give me a boner. <laughs> Have a rotten morning. <laughs> <laughs>